送我。For the love of all my dreams, looking for love in the faces on the streets, weary I searched, but no trace of love I see. Something died in me. Your eyes of love searched the years for me. You found me there when no one else could see. Right on the edge, you seized and rescued me. Gave your all for me. My debt to you is more than I can pay. Nothing I do could take this debt away. What can I say to the lover of my soul? You're my only love. You're my only love. I'll pray for you, my alabaster God. I'll hold your feet. This tears flowing from my heart. Everything to me, I'll follow you. I will run and I will soar. You're my only love. You're my. Hello, dear brothers and sisters of One Church all over in Dubai. It is my pleasure and privilege to be able to speak to you today. Before I start, I wanted to remember, remember and uh, bring to memory uh, times when uh, you guys from One Church two times, and it was a great time. Uh, our churches were 
encouraged by the testimonies. Our, our time together was special. The time of ministry was great. Uh, Pastor Theo uh, ministered two times, and it, and it was amazing. And um, we are encouraged, and God is speaking to me through through you guys, that he's, he can use you, he's using you, and he, he can use us as well. And then that we can uh, reach the world, and we can, be, uh, we can be his disciples. And so I'm very glad uh, to speak to you, church. And uh, uh, you have a special place in our hearts. So if you're considering coming next time with the team, please make your plans, book your flights, come over, don't worry about it, it's going to be great. And also, we also want to, want to, want to come and uh, be able to visit Dubai and see your church. Uh, I believe quarantine will be lifted soon, so it will be great, it will be a great time. We, are, we all live in a, in a very good time. So someone said, it's the best time to be alive. So... Uh, Let's serve God. Let's reach people for Jesus. Uh, we have everything we need. And um, I want to share to you about to you today about missions. Um, it's a big subject, but uh, the world is big. There are so many people that are unreached, and we are His church. We are one church, and we are uh, ready. Uh, we have everything that that. It, uh, that it needs. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. We have the Word of God. If, if you think about early disciples, when we read about them in Acts, they didn't have full Bible. They didn't have a complete understanding of Christology, about who Jesus is. Uh, they didn't have it. But us today, we have everything at our disposals. And so we can go. We can be a part of the answer to this world. And so uh, let us start reading. And I, I call my message today, uh, move on. Jesus said, let's go around the world and reach people. And uh, he said, go and uh, teach them and make them disciples. So let's read Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 39. Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 39. I'm going to be reading from New International Version. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages. So I can preach there also. That's why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. What a great scripture. And it's the beginning of the ministry of Jesus. And straight, straight away we see this pattern, this model that Jesus is showing to us. And he lived it, the prayer. If we're talking about reaching the lost... We cannot go there without a prayer. And think about Jesus. He would rise up early in the mornings and he would go somewhere alone and he would spend time with God because he didn't know what to expect today or, or at this particular day. So he needed Father's uh, guidance. He needed strength. He needed encouragement. You know, I've been watching the, the series The Chosen and... I was interested when uh, Jesus was talking to uh, Nicodemus and he said to him, uh, the Holy Spirit is like a wind. You don't know when, when it's going, when it's coming. So we don't know also, but we have this model from Jesus. He would go and pray. You know, we, could, we are his disciples. We are his followers. And if we are his followers, then we need to do the same. We need to... Uh, Find time with God and uh, get into His presence. Seek the face of Father God. Seek His face. Worship Him. Pray. And He would fill us. And, and then we would know what to do throughout the day. You know, we, we, 
if we filled we uh, with the prayer we we will be able to to minister well if you think about jesus he was he would spend hours in prayer so that he could just command uh demon go out just in seconds he would he could say rise up lazarus come forth he could he could heal the sick raise the dead because he spent time in the presence of, of his father and so we are his followers we need to do the same very early in the morning jesus got up left the house and went to a solitary play, place where he prayed so again if we want to if we, if we want to if we seriously want to see the world uh, to, to reach the lost we cannot go there without a prayer because it's the battleground we cannot go there without cover without artillery support we cannot go there without the presence of god with us how can we fight if we have no uh, prayer life how can we be successful in reaching the lost and preaching the good news if, if our lives are not filled with prayer you know disciples my next point disciples they said uh, we, uh, they were looking for Jesus and when they found him they exclaimed the mark mark shows us they were uh, agitated they were ready they they were excited they said hey Jesus everyone is looking for you Woohoo! it means things are going well it's it kicked off everything is happening they said we are going to build a mega church here we're going to start because you are very popular Jesus or we will build a big ministry here and um, I, I agree with them I'll do the same what if people will start coming to our churches think about it what if they will start show at, at the doorstep what if there would be no seats available you know what I do I know what I would do I would find I would find a bigger building I would find a better equipment I would hire staff you know budgets and everything but Jesus he said let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also that is why I have come think about this answer he didn't come to build a mega church or he didn't come to build a big ministry although his ministry is huge we are part of his ministry today but he said no nah, let us go somewhere else because I have to do what Father God wants and this is very important we have to follow what God wants and see Jesus was not interested in the big ministry you know sometimes maybe you you have your your ministry you you have a house meeting your house church or even church and you think ah, oh, it's not big and not much is happening you know here you have a good partner uh, Jesus said let's go to nearby villages I don't I don't need a big crowd I don't need popularity because I, ha I have to preach the Word of God uh, so I can preach there also he said that is why I have come so uh, you know Jesus is saying to us in the Bible go we see the the heart of God from the beginning when he was writing uh, when, he, when he gave us the Word of God through Abraham and others he was trying to reach the world he was trying to influence the world through Abraham through his sons through uh, through Israel later Isaiah says you know God was always wanted to reach the world you know the John 3 16 God so loved the world that he sent his only son God is a first missionary and um, he's telling us uh, be like me don't don't get comfortable don't get cozy but let us go somewhere else he's saying if we don't go if we're if, if, if there'll be no mission in our hearts then you know 
then then we fight each other then we uh, our vision is short we split churches we split ministries throughout the history we, we proved that if our eyes and our hearts are not where God's heart is so the there, another problem is that we live in the postmodern world, and there's a lot of talks about it. But briefly, I want to say, tell you that you know Americans they have a lot of statistics, so they figure out about five percent of the church is really doing something, reaching the world with the good news, actively sharing the good news. That means that ninety-five percent of the church is doing nothing about it. Uh, that's the problem, and we need to see why it happens. Um, one of the reasons is because um, we live in, in this world, and this postmodern world is affecting us. We live in the age of, uh, uh, age of consumption. You know, and if you, let's, let's look at Europe. Europe was Protestant or Christian continent. It was growing. But then now you, you see Protestantism in Europe, you can see only through architecture. In the beautiful buildings, cathedrals, in the beautiful churches. But they, most of these buildings are empty. There are no people. Not, not many Christians, born-again Christians, live in Europe. You know, cruel irony is that Protestantism created capitalism. You know, the improved social environment, improved economics. And then the capitalism uh, killed Protestantism in Europe. So we have to be aware of these things. We live in this world and it affects us. You know, the postmodern world is uh, replacing uh, uh, concepts. You know, today many believers think that God is there to make their lives better. Many believers live uh, like unbelievers because they say, I have to be happy or I have to, my, my way of life needs to improve. My quality of life needs to improve. I need to move to this neighborhood. It's better. And so people strive and work and work. You know the narrative. And so there's lack of commitment, lots of uh, running around. People want to be happy. People want to have a better life. I in the center of my desires and goals. Think about what Apostle Paul said. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, these, these phrase, this phrase won't fly in the Christian world I know today. It, will, it just it will, won't be accepted. Because we say, for me to live is I and my desires and to die, let's not think about death. So, you know, uh, we have this, um, in Kazakhstan, we have this, uh, w what is going on today is when Soviet Union collapsed and uh, the missionaries came and the churches were growing exponentially, you know, imagine, you know, someone would say, let's go, there's an American who is speaking, is renting this place, he's speaking about something. And uh, these, these are our ex-enemies and we say, yeah, let's go and see the the... Uh, real American, you know, the life person. And people would go and pack the building and the missionary, where missionaries preaching, it was uh, incredible. But then the golden times came in the uh, middle 2000s and then people starting to earn good dollar and they started to leave. The churches were emptying more and more and more as uh, as. Uh, the economy grew as materialism came into the minds and, and hearts of people. And there, mo there, was, there was so many opportunities for us uh, opened. And overseas, traveling overseas, you know, buying things overseas and e immigrating. And so churches started to empty. And, um, you know... If we think about Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, I named their Hebrew names. Think about those four boys. Remember from the book of Daniel. Remember they were brought there as captives to Babylon. 
they were, um, their names were changed. Their, uh, their, they were giving new names reflecting Babylonian gods. Like their Hebrew names would be like Yahweh helps or like uh, God is with me or God, God is my victory. But then their names were changed to Babylonian uh, gods. Uh, you know, they received scholarships, you know, uh, to study the best Babylonian universities and uh, uh, study Babylonian culture, science, traditions. So, um, the, and they were made eunuchs, you know, because they were serving the king's palace. So, the world made every, everything's possible outside world to wipe their identity, to wipe their belief in Yahweh. The pressure, was, the pressure was enormous. And Daniel, it's, it says in the book of Daniel, I like this, this phrase, but Daniel resolved not to. Not to eat from the king's table. Not to conform to the pressure, to the outside pressure. Because the faith, he said, no. He resolved not to. He stayed true to his faith. He said he remained true to his calling, to his God. He wouldn't allow world to to take his faith and relationship with God. And we 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 know the great stories there, great testimonies of God's glory. The same is required from us today. We live in the postmodern world. There's a lot of pressure to confirm. There's a lot of pressure on us. But then. We can resolve, like Daniel, in our hearts not to be part of this. We can stay true to our calling. We can, we can remain faithful to Jesus and to his, uh, to his goals. Because his heart is to reach lost people. You know, Romans, famous verse in Romans chapter 10, verses 13 to 15. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then they, can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. These verses require no comments. Because they're very clear. How can people hear if, if we're not going to them. We heard the message because someone told us. And God opened our hearts. And we opened our hearts. And we believed. So Jesus is, is saying to us. God is saying to us. Through his, um, through his um, gospels in the end. He said go to the entire world. Right? You know I heard this funny sayings. If you're fed up with the pastor's sermons. It's time to pack your bags. And go to mission. So instead of grumbling and fighting each other, we can let this energy out and reach the world. Um, you know, I heard another saying. It says, the longer church exists, the less it remembers why it was created in the first place. Any particular church. The longer church, local church exists, the less it remembers why it was created or started. So we have to remember that the church is not sending missionaries. We are all sent. Say that with me. With me. We are all sent. There are no specific missionaries. Yes, we have missionaries who go overseas and we support them. Those who go for long-term uh, missionary trips. But we have to remember that the church is sent, like Israel was sent to the world, like Abraham was sent, like Jesus is sent to the world, and the church is sent. We are, we are not to be static. We are not to stay in one place. Psalm 71, verses 15 to 18 says, My mouth will tell you of your righteous deeds. Of your saving acts all day long. Though I not know how to relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts. Sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds. Yours alone. 
Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, don't forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. See what this psalmist says, beautiful verses. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds. I will not shut up. Of your saving acts all day long, he says. I will speak to people. I will spread the message. He says, since my youth, God, you have taught me. And to these days, I declare your marvelous deeds. Wow, what a great testimony. And he says, even when I am old and gray, don't forsake me. Because I want to declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. This person uh, has something to tell us. Because he is interested to reach in generations. He will not shut up. His mouth will, will be sharing the good news. You know, my next point is that people have to be taught. Quite often people want to go to mission field or do something for God and mission wise they uh, but but to go is just not enough enthusiastically you know they the impulse the emotional impulse they want to go they want to do this but then we forget that Jesus said um, go and teach them go and teach them everything I command so we we're not only going and sharing the good news we have to remember that we can we have we, we can teach the people the ways of God. We can we have to make we, we, we need to make them disciples of God. I remember that and that means a lot of work. I remember when I came to Teen Challenge as a drug addict. You know, it took so many people to change my life. One prayer is not enough, but people were actually living with me. This missionary couple, Doug and Anna Boyle, they came from Australia. <laughs> Long way, yeah, but they came because they were obedient to the call. And also people who worked with me, who served me, they helped me to make right decisions. They helped me to, to learn the ways of God. So it cost something to make me. It costs something to make me. So people worked hard to make sure that my life would be changed. And God was with them. And God was changing me as well. So we have to not only go, but we, 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 we need to teach people the ways of God. We need to help them grow, help them to change. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 10, Chapter 10, verses 16. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be as wise as snakes and innocent as doves. You know, he's saying, go into the world. But to God, be innocent like doves. Be open, transparent before God and innocent like doves. But when you're in the world, remember that the world will come to change you. It will try to take away your convictions. It will trample you and it will try to uh, change your course. And in this case, Jesus is saying, be as wise as serpents. You know, God is first missionary. He's sending his church to the world. We are all sent. These are simple messages. And like... I heard another saying, and I use this in our church. When we finish our meeting, I say, our meeting is over, but our service is beginning. It's just beginning. Why is this phrase important? Because in the Soviet times, the authorities uh, made the law and that all Christians or other religions can do their religions only in the religious building not outside so people can come and hear this preaching worship God but when they go outside they're banned to um, share the gospel or to to do anything and so in the minds of uh, Soviet people it became like a stronghold 
when they came to church, and even now they, they think, oh, I, I come on Sunday, or like, you know, Friday in your case, I come on Sunday, I give my tithe, I hear the word, and then I go out, and the week belongs to me. They think God is only working in the building, this, this mindset. And so I'm saying our meeting is over in our church, but our service is just beginning. We have to change that. We have to go out of the building. Like right now, many of our church, many churches in Kazakhstan are closed because authorities told them to be closed, like in your case. But uh, if you have a house church, nobody can close you really. You still get in together. The word is still being preached. People are still being changed. So I know some churches in our city that are continue their services simply because they're not registered their building. Simply because they, they chose it as a, a house church model. And um, they're able to uh, operate. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I know there's, it, it's the same vision in your church. Home groups, house church model. We have to keep the traditional model and we also have to develop the house church model. This is very important. The book of Acts is still being written. It started with the home church and it will finish with the home church. I tell you my own personal testimony that when I became a pastor, I started to study books. I, started to, I was studying scripture. I was praying because I knew I had to be one step ahead of our congregation. So when I had people under me and I was responsible for them, I was growing. I made sure I was growing and I had to grow. Now, what if we all have somebody that we are caring for in our house church, in our home group meeting, that will propel you to study, to grow and to be efficient. And in this way, church is going to be very strong. Not just one certain pastor somewhere in the city, but many people. So I'm, I want to leave us with this thought that they said to Jesus, let's go and it looks like mega church is going to happen. And Jesus said, no, no, no. I'm going to preach. I'm going to visit places. I'm going to go. And in the end of the Gospels, he said, go now. I'm sending you. Please pray with me now that God would use you. I know you're thinking, how can I be a missionary? I'm a mom, I'm a husband, I'm a worker, I have responsibilities. That's so good, but you can still do something for this world. Uh, in, in prayer, look for, for way, look for ways to reach uh, unreached people. Ask God to give you wisdom, special situations. Be a part of home groups. Start your own home group. And uh, bring and ask God to bring people to you so that you can take care of them and, uh, and help them grow and reach the world for Jesus. Lord God, I, I thank you for one church in Dubai, Lord. This is a great, great group of people, Lord. I, I, I thank you, Lord, for the pastor, for Theo, uh, Lord, I pray for his team. I pray, Lord, that you bless this church. Help them to grow, Lord. Because we live in the end of days, end of times, Lord. Help us to, by faith, make this step. Yes, we have a lot of obstacles, a lot of worries and fears. But help us to make a small step of faith, Lord. And towards you, Lord. Help us to be obedient to your calling. And not look to the left or to the right, Lord, because we know that you are right with us. And when we share your, your word, when, you, when we share about you, when people are getting saved, we know that we're doing the very right thing we were created for. I thank you, Lord. Bless, bless our churches. Help us to grow, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. See you soon.